Today's video is all about cost allocation. We're going to define cost allocation, explain the process, and provide examples to help you understand why cost allocation is useful. What is cost allocation? Basically, a cost allocation system is a process for assigning costs to the different businesses, departments, or products that benefit from those costs, also known as cost drivers. Throughout this video, we're going to illustrate cost allocation methods using a fictional business, a chain of lemonade stands known as Lisa's Luscious Lemonade. If Lisa wants to know what it costs to produce a jug of lemonade, she needs to allocate several different types of costs or a cost pool to each jug she produces. What types of costs are allocated? Now, let's talk about the types of costs a business might allocate. There are three broad categories of costs used in cost accounting. Direct costs. You can trace direct costs right to the product or service. Lisa's Luscious Lemonade has direct materials such as lemons, sugar, and water. She also has direct labor for the wages she pays to employees who make the lemonade. Indirect costs. Indirect costs can't be traced directly to a product or service but they are necessary. Indirect costs may be fixed or variable. Fixed costs stay the same from month to month, no matter how the company's production or sales volume fluctuates. A few common examples of fixed costs include renting manufacturing equipment or a supervisor's salary. Variable costs increase when sales or production volume goes up. One example of a variable cost is equipment maintenance because a heavily used piece of equipment needs more frequent maintenance. Overhead costs aren't part of producing a good or service, but they benefit the business as a whole. Some examples include advertising, insurance, human resources, and wages paid to the sales team. What are the four purposes of cost allocation? So why bother with cost allocation? Because it provides several benefits. The first benefit is to justify costs for pricing or reimbursement. Cost allocation helps a business know how much to charge for its products or services. For example, suppose Lisa bases the price of a glass of lemonade on direct costs alone without allocating overhead costs. She would lose money on every glass of lemonade she sells and eventually have to close up shop. Two, to measure the cost of inventory and cost of goods sold. Businesses also use cost allocation for financial reporting. Generally accepted accounting principles, otherwise known as GAAP, requires companies to match expenses with related revenues. For Lisa's Luscious Lemonade, this means Lisa can't expense the cost of lemons and sugar when she buys ingredients. Instead, she allocates those costs to inventory, where they remain until she sells the lemonade. Once Lisa makes the sale, she can finally expense those costs as a part of cost of goods sold. Number three, to provide information for decisions. Cost allocation gives business owners and managers the information they need to make financial and economic decisions. A company might use GAAP for its financial reporting, but GAAP isn't always helpful for internal decision making. That's why many businesses use activity-based costing in addition to the cost allocation used for financial reporting. In activity-based costing, a business assigns products to all of the overhead costs they can reasonably be assumed to have caused. This usually includes some, but not all, manufacturing overhead costs and some operating expenses they don't assign to products under GAAP rules. Say Lisa is considering selling freshly baked muffins in addition to lemonade. Lisa needs to know the cost of producing those muffins. Using activity-based costing, she can assign costs to each activity in the production process, allowing her to more accurately adjust her pricing methodology to set a price that accounts for how much it costs to create each muffin. Then she can compare that cost to the price her customers are willing to pay and decide whether it's worth the effort and expense of producing and selling them. Number four, to motivate managers and employees. Cost allocation can also help motivate managers and employees. For example, say Lisa has two shifts of employees making the lemonade. One shift uses more lemons and sugar, but makes fewer jugs of lemonade per shift. 
Maybe untrained employees are making mistakes. Maybe someone is stealing products. Either way, allocating costs to the different shifts has uncovered a problem Lisa needs to look into. What is the process? Now that you know what cost allocation is and why it's important, let's dive into the process for allocating costs. Step one, identify the direct costs that need to be allocated. For Lisa's Luscious Lemonade, the cost object is a jug of lemonade. For a larger, more complex business, cost objects can be a product line, a department, or a branch. Allocating direct costs is usually pretty simple. For example, if Lisa's Luscious Lemonade produced 50,000 jugs of lemonade, it should be easy to figure out how much was spent on direct materials and direct labor costs and divide those numbers by 50,000 to come up with a direct cost per jug. Step two, allocate overhead costs. Allocating overhead is a bit more complicated because they're usually split between manufacturing and non-manufacturing costs. Some overhead costs clearly fall on one side or the other. For example, a factory floor supervisor's salary is clearly a manufacturing cost. But what about costs that serve all parts of an organization, such as human resources, or facilities costs, which might include rent for the building, insurance, janitorial services, and building maintenance? Different businesses allocate these costs in different ways. For example, a manufacturer might allocate human resources based on the headcount of the manufacturing versus non-manufacturing parts of the business. Facilities costs might be allocated based on the square footage of the manufacturing area versus sales and administrative square footage. Electricity might be based on machine hours. In a perfect world, a business could keep a running total of total costs and allocate them every month or quarter. But in reality, businesses usually set a predetermined overhead rate and allocate that rate using an allocation base. Ideally, the allocation base should be a cost driver that causes those overhead costs. For a manufacturer, that might be direct labor hours, machine hours, or simply the number of products produced in a given period. Let's recap. Now let's review what we learned about cost allocation. Number one, cost allocation allows a business to assign all of the different costs that go into creating a product or service to the appropriate cost center and adjust their budgeting accordingly. Number two, cost allocation helps a business set prices, appropriately record inventory and costs of goods sold in its financial statements and journal entries, make better business decisions and hold managers and employees accountable. Number three, there are different methods for allocating indirect costs and overhead, such as basing it on headcount, square footage, machine hours, the depreciation of various assets, or the number of products produced. Number four. And finally, when allocating overhead, most businesses calculate a predetermined overhead rate and apply it to different products, departments, or projects. Hey, if you found this video useful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. That's all for today. Good luck with your cost allocation.